I often wonder how you had the bravery, not only to live the life as the art of the artist, mm-hmm. as, as we will get to, but also just to come over to an entirely new country and build mm-hmm. a life the way that you did. And I was saying, or I was asking you if you, did you think about it much or because you were younger, you just dove into this whole experience? I, I think I had such a pull that it had a life of its own because I had such, such a pull of feeling I want to see something different. I want to see something. I think growing up in a small town and uh, it was like, I knew the whole town. There was nothing, you know, it was like I wanted to explore. So I wanted to, there was the adventurous side of me that just wanted to see something new, be somewhere new, be in a total travel and and do that. And so... How early I, did that start for you? Do you remember when think, you felt that pull? I think when I was already a teenager, I remember, <laughs> this is a funny little story, but there's, <laughs> there's a, there was a hospital in a, in a, in a town, you know, a small hospital, and I went, I had appointment, and I went to do some test or something, and they had built a whole little new wing in a hospital, and I was sitting there, because it was new, and I was sitting like, oh my, I was so excited, because it felt like I was somewhere else, and I just remember that, it was that kind of feeling, like, I couldn't wait to get out, so. And that's where it started. Yeah. Yeah, so and it had a life of its own, and I had such a pull of seeing, wanting to see more. So I didn't feel like, it didn't feel scary. And did you figure out, right, even in that moment, okay, I've got to come up with a plan to... No, I had never any plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, I remember we talked about that. <laughs> yeah. I had no plan, it was a one step at a time, seeing, like, I saw an ad in a paper in Finland, you know, seeing for au pair, I came here, I saw au pair first. And so it was a one step answering the ad, and then I got the place, and then I came over, and I stayed here for a little while, and went back and came back again. And yeah, talk to, talk to us about not having a plan. What does that look like for you? Um, well, I think things kind of present themselves in life. And uh, then I just follow what is, you know, what I'm called to do. Yeah. But how do you know what that is? How what do that? you, yeah, what does that feel like to you? Or how, what do you, it's come up before. Right. We've talked about it. Right. I don't know that it would just be a creative person's right. way of, but I think we have to tap into that more actually because mm-hmm. we have to learn to follow some sort of intuition mm-hmm. to access the creativity that mm-hmm. we all express. Yeah. So I don't know if it is more likely that creative people do this, but I'm wondering what that's like because it's a little different for everyone. Right. Yeah, I realized I was just talking to about this to someone the other day that... Um, um, there's some points in my life that I have felt like very clear this is what I want to do this is like I remember going to acting school in Santa Monica and I walked in um, just to come and check out and check out the place and I said I want to be here it was so clear and I, st- I was studying acting there like maybe two years or something so it was so like those little moments like coming over here and going to acting school and and I think it's following the passion too. Yeah. Like the interest, the curiosity, where where is the passion and, and yeah. So and it's not you know, it's it's kind of in a it's not every time that it's so clear for me, but I just remember those moments when it's really great clear. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and you follow them. Yeah. And yeah. How, how do you how do you know to do that? Is that something that you also just had as a kid, or how do you know? Not, how would you not to do that? That's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> well, I, think, I mean, saying like, oh, I really want to do this, but think about like, yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know how how not to. That's good. I think many times for me there. There was judgment around me about decisions that needed to be made or which direction to go or society Mm -hmm. in general does that Mm -hmm. to us. And I think sometimes I've questioned that because I've thought too much about it. 
maybe right. in and it maybe that was a good thing for you however it all worked out that I we think just, because I don't think too much yeah <laughs> But it sounds like no one interfered with that either. No, I don't, yeah, I don't, you know, I didn't, I think growing up, I didn't have too much of my parents didn't put too much of um, boundaries of kind of like rules for me. I don't remember having that so much. I did kind of follow my, do my own thing and follow my own thing. And it seems like they gave you a certain amount of freedom for that. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was... 17 and I had my first boyfriend and I had a he was in Sweden and I I wanted to go and visit him and I just let my parents know that I'm going now <laughs> <laughs> and they were fine with that yeah they were not like too happy but then they were okay but it, I just remember I don't remember going and asking that can I go it was like you just you know, did yeah it. yeah yeah yeah, I don't know that I could have done that. <laughs> so probably that's just the, the part of me. I still figured out how to follow that. Mm -hmm. As you know, because we still talk about it today. Like how we're constantly right. thinking about how can we right. tune into that. Right. And I know how to follow it, but it took me a little while longer to access it again and to be clear when when it feels right like that. Right, right. So how did it, well, you came here as an au pair, and then how did you transition or decide to pursue creativity and mm -hmm. art? Mm -hmm. I think that also was just the little steps at the time. I didn't ever decide. It was just, I'm, I was drawn to it. I was so excited doing it. I started just doing it, you know, painting t-shirts and I I think that was the first thing that I... No, I took some... I, I was taking photographs. Maybe that was the first thing. And then I started painting t-shirts and I sold them right away. And so it had a... It also had a life of its own that it was right away. Everybody wanted them and... So it was things like that. And then it just had a little steps. And then I remember... I remember first time when I got paid for my work. It was pretty amazing. Yes. And was it the t-shirt? I mean, I, I, no, I, I did, you know, I did sell the t-shirt and I got paid for it. But I think I sold my design for t-shirt company. Something about that was different. Yeah. So. And what, what, what was that like for you? Oh, I just remember being so excited. Did you think, I can do this? I can really do this? Was there any part of you that thought maybe I couldn't make a living as an artist? I didn't ever decide either that <laughs> Don't, don't you love how I keep trying to get you to think about things? And you're like, uh, I don't really do that. <laughs> I didn't decide that, oh, I'm going to live as an artist. I was just excited. I just followed the excitement, you know, of that yeah. too. That it was like, and then I did more of it. And I was looking to do more. But that, I remember that was the first feeling like, oh, they thought of me as an artist. I, they bought my drawing. So, but it took me years to say that I'm an artist. It took you years even after that? Yes. Why yes. do you think that was? Because I still wasn't thinking of myself as a full, you know, I wasn't a full-time artist. And it was just something that somebody, really talented people do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and clearly you are not. No. <laughs> yes. I know. I still when is that moment that you feel well in in fairness mm -hmm. we were talking about this before too in one of the episodes you do have to develop your skill it's not something that happens overnight it takes time so it would make sense that as you develop right. your ability that you would right. get more confidence but when right. do you think when did that sink in for you where you felt like huh i really have something here or i feel really I feel like an artist. Was there a moment for that too? Mm, I think I think it was um, when I was in Ten Women and I was already selling things, and then it was like owning that and saying that I am an artist. I'm actually doing this for my li living. I was already doing it for my living. So before I before you joined Ten Women, before I would say if people you know ask me what do you do, and I say I'm an artist. So, what did you say? Because you did massage for a yeah, while also. Yeah. So if someone said to you, what do you do? Did you just say? 
I think I would say that I do massage. And, you know, I'm a massage therapist. Yeah. Um, so it took, I don't remember when, but it took me a while. When I was in 10 women, maybe a year or two or something. Really? Yeah. Even being in 10 women, <laughs> which <laughs> we should share, is a, it was a co-op gallery. Mm-hmm. And that's how you and I met. Too. Yeah. We can, sometimes if you want, you can talk out there <laughs> right <laughs> you can say something to them out to the there camera, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> that's how we met and that uh-huh. is for me when I became a became an artist yeah. but but technically because I started with my chairs I don't think I really thought of myself as an artist until I was painting mm-hmm. and then maybe even selling mm-hmm. my first painting, mm-hmm. which I still remember that too. I remember selling the first chair. I would think of myself as a designer, but it's interesting how I thought of myself as an artist only as a painter, mm-hmm. that somehow yeah. that fits under that umbrella yeah. better, but really an artist encompasses so, so many, many things. Yeah, But it's fascinating to me that it took you... But it took you that long. And I I, 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 I wonder if it was also before, because when I started to do paint on canvas, instead of ceramics and oh. different things, maybe it was when I started to do sell my paintings, maybe that was the time Same that thing, I said, then. yeah. Because did you start in 10 women with ceramics? I did. Did you transition from the t-shirts to the ceramics? Yeah, I, I think when I first started in 10 women I had t-shirts I had ceramics and I did little like a wall hangings like a um they were mixed media wall images and what what were they you painted or you drew I painted I put a photograph on it and I painted and I hang some objects from the little board that they were they were like from the natural little pieces of wood and shells and Oh, cool. Almost like a mobile effect underneath. Yeah, they were little hangings and they were little... I don't I don't think I did so many of them, but yeah. But and I remember having those. And that transitioned into the painting? Yeah, I think it did from, go from there. And then, is that your favorite painting? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and because I know you, I can also say that you're presently at an evolution within your painting mm-hmm. of taking that to the next level mm-hmm. right is that mm-hmm. fair to say yeah that I you're so. that I think it's interesting that we're talking about when we decide to become artists and own that mm-hmm. as as part of who we are sure. and really meaning that we become more confident in in our creative abilities in general and how that evolves as we evolve that as we continue to grow and expand as artists, as painters, Mm -hmm. that we reach this new level of exploring, again, I'm an artist in this new way. Like, you're you're starting to work, you do these amazing characters and and people and women especially, Mm -hmm. and then you're starting to branch into abstract, Mm -hmm. which I've been playing with too, Mm -hmm. and there's this whole, whole new exploration of am I an artist, an abstract artist? Right. Is this something that I'm confident at, or is it similar? Can I call myself an artist who does abstract? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even though you might be painting for years in one style or, you know, yeah. one medium. Yeah. It doesn't... What I, what I keep experiencing now is that none of this... It doesn't stop. No. There, not that I... I don't know that I thought it did, but there's this evolution of acceptance and Mm -hmm. pushing yourself to grow Mm -hmm. really Mm -hmm. and then with that Mm -hmm. come somewhat new insecurities that have to be developed again and maybe not for everybody but for me for sure Right. But some of that may also be because I was self-taught and you were too right did you do any training no and it, do you remember how that happened for you the first time that you drew something and that you felt like, oh, I want to keep doing this? Was there a moment? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm projecting, projecting on you. <laughs> Were you at a moment? Well, I just, rem- I actually remember being a teenager and sitting, I don't know what inspired it, but sitting down at the table, taking a photograph, and trying to paint it exactly with acrylics. 
I don't know how I was able to do that. I don't know where that came from. I think before that, when I was younger, I would try to look at flowers at still life and try to create them with watercolor. And, mm-hmm. But something clicked mm-hmm. where I thought, how can I... I can do this. I can look at this and I can recreate it. So mm. I really had a moment mm. where I felt like not everybody can do that or ha- right, has that ability right. so easily, so let's say. So you saw your own talent, your ability to do I that. I think so. Uh-huh. Well, it just my, my... I just became aware that there was something there. Mm-hmm. But then I suppressed it for mm. a long time. Or I didn't mm. pursue it. I didn't feel like it was uh, as good as other people's. And so I stopped. Yeah. 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 Until it yeah. came to Ten Women, where you all inspired me because I saw what was possible. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I remember when you came. And, I, and you said that you were a designer, interior designer, and then you did the improv. improv. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did all those things. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. And I thought, that this girl is good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, OT. <laughs> We have to take her in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a big turning point for me. Mm-hmm. Do you think it was for you too when you went to Ten Women? Yes, definitely. And do you think? Well, go ahead. What were you going to say? I I just remember always saying like, oh, I would love to have a, like a store where I could just sell my things, and I would behind the store, I would create things and sell them, and and then Ten Women came, and it was a store where I could sell my things. Yeah. So I have been saying it that it's something I would like to have, and then to have the place to sell them it was great. Yeah, it was inspiring to create more and more because they were selling it too. So oh, that must have been so exciting. Yeah. And how did you find it? How did you find Ten Women? I stopped. I was walking on the main street um, with my boyfriend at the time, and we went in, and he said, "Oh yeah, see, um, Oti is an artist." and I would have not said anything. <laughs> you were still a massage. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. And I would have not said anything. And but he kind of talked to the lady there and she took my info. So. And then you went in and brought your work. They called me like a year later. A year later. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They called me that they have an opening and come to the meeting to show my things. And what was that like to present your work? I don't remember it being... They were so nice, you know. It was so relaxed and comfortable. Yeah. And, and I don't remember being nervous. It wasn't... I, I remember I had a bowl that I had made and it was a dragon in it and I had painted it, a ceramic bowl. And it was so... I mean, I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. So I was... I think I was like... You believed in that. Yeah. Look, <laughs> look at my bowl. <laughs> Like, look I'm, what I made. I'm not an artist, but look at my body. Exactly. I'm a massage therapist, and look what I made. Yeah, I just thought it was. So, so I, I, yeah, I think I, it was. I think I it was okay. Yeah. I'm sure I was shy to talk about stuff and going nervous too, but yeah, yeah, I don't remember it being that terrifying. Because I, the reason I was asking that too is I was thinking one of the ways that ten women worked for me in believing in myself was just the simple acceptance of other of your peers Mm -hmm. here are these people they're artists yeah (laughs) they're selling their work it was my first time presenting something to a group like that aside from maybe school situations which are different and having that acceptance Mm -hmm. even though ideally it's not what we're all supposed to be after Mm -hmm. but to have someone from the outside say yeah you know I I believe what you believe right that you're right I think that was such a a skill a talent yeah that was such a amazing supportive environment to do that yeah and to have a be around other artists and figuring out all everything together yeah well, you so. it's it was the very beginning for me. I can't mm-hmm. thank you all enough. A group yeah. of you, a certain group of you <laughs> <laughs> that have become friends of mine f- for a really long time, right. and I, I needed that support. Yeah, and I got it. I know, and we still need it. We do. We still yeah. have it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want to ask you more about no plan. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> well, and how does that work? Because basically you have been making your living as an artist Mm -hmm. for how long? Long time. (laughs) Yeah, long, maybe almost 20 years. Wow. Almost. 
Well, and when you think about how does the business relate to going with the flow, the way that you do it? I don't think it relates very well. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it does, but I think in that part it would be good if I would be more planning. I think there's more of a... I would think it's... Well, it can be creative too. Business can be creative, I think. But yeah. also it's the other um, left brain thing of being organized and planning and and looking at statistics and doing all that. And I don't... That's not the... Not your favorite. Not my strong part. <laughs> <laughs> well, how have you managed anyway? How have you made it? Um... I think I'm just slowly learning the business part too, and I think I've been managing and making it because I, uh, because the art sells. Yeah. So basically that because I have found like ten women I have found online and things that I do that it's where I have exposure and it as people find it. So. So it's just sort of worked. It has worked, yeah. It snowballed, really, from 10 women, do you think? That was where it started to go in a new direction? Yeah, and I was, you know, it was a big step. Because then it became, I became more like a full-time artist doing it. When you were in 10 women? Yeah, yeah. So I started to do that full-time. And did you start doing more shows then, too? Uh, I did some little shows, yeah, little art fairs and things, and I would sell at the farmers market. Also, we would have, I would have table there. And, yeah, and I even some, remember that. Yeah, yeah, and I did shows, yeah, art shows. Because what would be interesting to hear your thoughts on too is mm. how you were making a living before the internet really took right. over and right. happened, mm -hmm. and how I don't know if you can describe it even but how is that possible. different <laughs> yeah yeah how is that possible and how is how is it different for you now having experienced both kinds of selling your art well the bus I think the possibilities are so big now with the internet that there's like endless possibilities of where to sell it and and to be artists it's you can anybody can find you Worldwide, anywhere. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's exploded. There's so much more exposure. Artists don't need the galleries and everything just to be seen. Yeah. You can be seen anywhere. Then I also think, mm -hmm. though, having done 10 Women, it's it's a different when you don't see your work in front of actual people. Mm -hmm. I think that was a benefit of doing certain shows and mm -hmm. being at 10 Women mm -hmm is you could get a read on how people were responding to your art. Mm -hmm. I think that initially helped me, well, did I, it helped me, and then I, I guess the same feedback really does come from the internet when I think about it. Yeah, because you can see if it's... If people are liking it, or like it, yeah. commenting, initially it was commenting on blogs, or then purchasing it, obviously, right. that's the right. best compliment. Right. Yeah. Are you glad that the internet is here? <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, Did it make a huge difference for you um, to get online? Or had you already developed your community? Because you sell a lot to a lot of local collectors. Right. When I sold in 10 women for years. Yeah. And I, I had, over the years, just regular customers. And I knew people. And at that time, the internet wasn't really here yet. And I wasn't yeah. so savvy about business or doing that, that I would have gotten email addresses of my customers. Oh. Because I there, I had so many and I don't... You don't know how to get in touch with yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. I have yeah. some customers that I've actually found through Facebook that is like, oh, yeah, I found you or something happened that they knew me from 10 women, but, but that's, yeah, too bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good that you... It's a good uh, point to make how important it is to sign your work. Right. Because some people don't, or they make it 
where you wouldn't be able to find somebody. Right. But people, you always, you have a unique name. <laughs> yeah. And people can find you. Yeah. So maybe more will they get a chance They can easily find to... me if they Google me, so. Yeah. Yeah. You're out there. Yeah. So what has it been like since the internet happened? How did that transition everything for you? I think it took for a while for me to start selling on the internet and sell on Etsy and... and um, but I think it's also you have to find the customers there too in the same way mm-hmm. or they have to find you and so yeah it's not like it's it's not even how it was maybe it was a little bit easier mm-hmm. but you can't just get online and expect everyone to find you yeah, yeah. there still has to There's be so much. a story there there has to be a path to develop just mm-hmm. like you would Mm-hmm. without the internet it just ultimately I think feels easier right because you have access to so many right. people right but you're you admittedly are more on the shy introverted side right <laughs> <laughs> oh no I don't yeah, just generally yeah yeah I In, don't think so maybe how did you do it when you were having your shows are you comfortable engaging with the customers or do you prefer to just observe from the sidelines? It depends, it depends if I'm on an introvert mood yeah. <laughs> or if I'm on an outgoing mood. Yeah. Does it, does it change for you? It does change. Sometimes I don't feel like being, I need time alone and I don't feel like being in the crowds and yeah, I, it's hard to go and be out there. And then other times it's great. But... Um, I think in uh, in uh, I think also I would think next show when I do I just have to take some time to be alone and then before you have yeah, the show yeah yeah I should just pay because lately I pay attention more to that like yeah. how when do I need alone time and when can I be social and I think that would be good to do before the shows too to have some alone time and not to be social so to be ready and then it's fun. Does the alone time really help you to paint? Do you need? Do you realize that you need more of that in order to access the kind mm. of imagination and creativity that comes through uh, in your paintings? I like to paint when I'm alone, so there's nobody. I know because I'm always asking <laughs> yeah. you to paint, <laughs> which is interesting. I can paint with some people, uh-huh. but I also understand it's. It's just, a, it's solitary. Right. Whatever it is that you're experiencing right. there. And I realize to now too that I should not take phone calls when I'm in the middle of a painting. Yeah. Because it interrupts that mode. And it's so nice to be in it. And usually I, now it's like five hours intensely in it. Really? Yeah. And, and what what is that? Can you describe that mode? Oh, it's just, I just lose, totally you. lose the sense of time. And, uh. If I don't put the music on before I start, I don't even have that, like, I don't stop to go and put the music on. I don't stop to eat and, like, if suddenly I get really hungry, I have to have some food ready, so. But it's so, I just love to be, it's so amazing to be so engaged, you know. Yeah. To be so in, like, in something. Because I think we've talked about this before, you don't necessarily come to the painting with a plan. <laughs> like, I no. don't even ask for right. this after our conversation. <laughs> right. Right. Whereas I right. often have a sketch. Right. Unless it's abstract, you can't do that at all. Okay. But how does it start for you? How does how would you describe the, paint, yeah. the painting process? Yeah. Um, I think now I know kind of that I kind of start, if I take a canvas, I start playing with the color. I just put it on the floor and I pour color on it and I go like "Mm." (laughs) (laughs) just to see it move and so I start playing with it often and just it's almost like a warm up to it and then I put it up and I see something in it or I see where it wants to go or if I have something in impulse like do something paint something on it which is often a face or if a person or woman so I just go for it in a way, you're letting it tell you what it wants to become. Right. And listening. Right. And feeling that. Right. And I think you've told me before, sometimes it comes to you in dreams. Mm-hmm. Would it be the entire image or really just a feeling that you it's, try to convey? I think, I think it's usually a feeling. Like I, One time I remember having a 
image that kept coming to me and coming to me and then I painted it. Which is the one I have in my business card, the surrender. Oh, I painted yeah. first. So it's letting go that I painted and that I just it was it stopped coming after I painted it. But like in this painting I wanted to paint a deer. Yeah. There was a little story yeah. behind it. But I didn't imagine that it would come out like this. Yeah. Only thing I was like, I want to do something with the deer. And it became this. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, I think, well, because I create similarly, but I, I'm so close to painting mm -hmm. that I don't think about anymore how it's just amazing when you look at people's work where it comes from, right. how it, it evolves. And you could ask everyone who creates, especially from imagination, because until we did our show together, the mm -hmm. Darklings, where we all created a little character, yeah. I didn't think I could create from my imagination, right? right? I right. initially looked, I was saying before, at a you photograph and developed an eye and maybe started to work on skill. But when we did that show, it encouraged me to explore that right. and then I just kept working with it and now I even want to expand that further and see how far I can take it with more environments and, mm -hmm. but it's it's a little bit going back to what you were saying at the very beginning even with with no plan of life it just you take steps. these steps mm -hmm. and I think one of the things I want to share with everyone out there if people are just thinking about exploring this is that to remember that it is a series of steps. Right. You it's, don't just become it suddenly. You don't just do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe some somebody out there did. I'm sure they did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they do. You never like blanket statement, everyone. But for most yeah. people, it takes to be able to to assemble the color, the imagination, and have that become something that feels good to you. Right. How do you know when something is good for you and finished? How do you know? Mm. <laughs> I, I just have a feeling that now it's finished. I know when it's finished. It's only inst instincts all finished. Yeah. Yeah. And I have such a habit of painting over to... That you, of the whole canvas when yeah, you just of, start over. Yeah, there's so many images often underneath that I paint, have painted over. Do you, ever, has, hmm? do you ever regret that? Oh, yeah. You do? Yeah. <laughs> I just I have a picture of, you know, I've been taking now uh, pictures of when I'm in a process, and, and it's actually hard now to see that, wow, there was that, and I never have that again. Yeah. That maybe I should have stopped and... Yeah, it became harder when I take pictures of the process to see the paintings oh, that are painted over. I hadn't thought about that before. Yeah. It is It is completely this kind of painting you have to be willing should, to let go. Yeah, maybe I just have like, a, I was thinking that maybe I just have like a 10 canvases and just keep doing the, doing the new image on the other canvas instead of the one oh, that I, you know. That would be interesting. Yeah. That would be a good show I too. know, I need a big studio. <laughs> <laughs> so I can lay out like... And yeah. yeah, but it's it's. But then again, I think it's okay to let go of the image too. It's almost like a. It's it's almost like for me, it's like I play out the my own. It's evolves like I play out the story already. It's like starts with this different image with the big deer, but then it becomes something else, and there's two people. It's not any more about the one deer. Yeah. So it's okay I painted over the big deer. Because that's already, I lived that through, through the painting. Yeah. You bring up a really good point, which is part of the reason that we do any of this, whatever mm. our medium, is for the process. Mm -hmm. Right. It isn't for right. the end result. Right. When you are... But I forget this. I forget that too. <laughs> when you are engaged in the work and mm. you're in that zone mm -hmm. that you're talking mm -hmm. about, that's really it. Right. That's the whole point. I know. So it could go anywhere it wants to go. It's just staying there as it's, long as you can. Yeah. And it's not necessarily being that to the result. Don't because then it's hard, it's hard to paint if you think about the result. For me, it's, yeah. it loses the magic of it if I'm trying to just get this result. And do you find that 
hard to separate than the business, the commercial. Yeah, it's all side going mine, and it's like a being schizophrenic. It's like you're supposed to no, 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 you be mine. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you you're supposed to sell this thing no just be quiet I don't you know <laughs> just paint enjoy yeah yeah totally it's always in my Which mind which side like wins the one that wants to enjoy and good. paint it does win yeah, yeah. that's good yeah well, but that, it, it is it's that. it's that it's that voice is going on all the time this yes. is no good you're crazy and yes. no shut up <laughs> you're gonna do it <laughs> let me paint <laughs> oh this never happens to me yeah <laughs> it's good. I thank you for sharing that because yeah. we talked earlier about developing your confidence, even saying you're an artist. And then right. I was saying, yes, we continue to evolve. Right. And we still, we have the voices, the voices. of suddenly this isn't good enough. Mm-hmm. And I go through the same mm-hmm. thing on a different level. Yeah. Maybe someone out there doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I find all the conversations I have with creatives, it's, right. it is a part of the process. And it's being able to ultimately, maybe they serve each other too. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. sometimes, we talked about this before too, in parameters for creating are helpful. Mm-hmm. So being in business and thinking about the audience you might be creating for, it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be a bad thing. It doesn't have to be, no. oh, I'm commercial. Yeah. It's it helps you put a structure around the creativity. Those things work together, and I I fought that for a while. I think I think that's that's an art of its own, you know, how to balance those things out, and how it's it's such an art. I mean, I I I think I think of an acting, you know, I think in acting, like how people do it, they have to be in a camera, they have to meet, fit the, you know, hit their marks, and they have to look this way, and then they have to be spontaneous to say out. The lines. There's such a format where you have to be completely structure. expressive. Yeah, and such a tight moment. structure, and then now be totally natural and expressive and spontaneous. Yeah, with the, I never and I, that. And then I think with the painting too, it's like there's a structure. Oh, I'm gonna have to sell it. I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna do this, and can be this, but then be spontaneous in that moment. Mm-hmm. And let it be real and yeah. Well, you brought up acting, and I want to touch upon that. That you also have a really strong love for performance mm-hmm. and dance, mm-hmm. and I'm wondering how those inform your paintings. Mm. That you work it, in these different mediums, really. Um, it it does because it's it's. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, OT. It's like Barbara Walters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make me cry, Barbara. <laughs> I don't mean to, but I know how meaningful it no, is. No, it for is you. because it's so. Um, it's such a creative too, being creative in the, in the, in my body with my whole, you know, being with the whole being. It's almost like in the, on a theater. It's like I can step into the painting and act it out, the character. And with what what I do in my the whole group, it's totally improvisational also. And we do characters, we do them in a spot and customs and it's very visual and movement oriented and it's not about words. And uh, dance is the same. I get to dance the feelings and I... It's such amazing around to do it, and it's improvisational dance, and it's a uh, organic and. I just put it all together. Yeah, Chris. Like for the first time. Yeah, really knowing you, hearing you describe all of those. Mm-hmm. That's where you live. That's where you exist. Yeah, because none of you don't do scripted acting. Mm-hmm. The dance isn't choreographed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You you have even a gift in that you know how to fully access that That, part of yourself. Right, (laughs) right. And I'll have some thoughts for you after this. Okay. But as your friend, I'm just realizing how much I would want to support that in you. Oh. And that you would want to set up your life. You know, I think part of this life as an artist is recognizing where your strengths are. Right. And then filling in the areas because it's almost like I don't want to tamper with that. Mm. I don't want to interrupt what that is. Even what you were saying with don't answer the phone. Right. 
because you're that's in that's where song. it comes from what you make to me mm-hmm. is amazing mm-hmm. and it's because you have learned how to access that mm-hmm. and foster it mm-hmm. and you live it in so many ways mm-hmm. and then there's this split of that I have to kind of come back to reality on this level right. and manage things in a completely right. different mindset right. but the gift for you and the creativity really lies in this other mindset that not that most people I don't, I personally don't think have a lot of access to, Mm. because we, uh, we tend to, Mm -hmm. I think society errs, you know, way more on the structured plan, do things, even creatives, especially in business, we have to, we have to work at that. It's really special that you have that. Yeah, it is kind of that kind of dreamlike world, like an otherworldly dreamlike magical existence. Yeah. That is that I do feel like I go into. Yeah, and if there's any part of you that judges that, it shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, you know, and if I, you I think that you have to be a different way mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. order to well, thrive. It's like, yeah, it's just like I need that lots of gold being in this world part of it too. Yeah, and I know I can do it, but it's it doesn't come so easily to me than being in this other yeah. world. It's so. And it's so delicious. It's, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, if you were, if you were going to tell someone who wanted to pursue, let's just say painting, mm-hmm. what would you tell them? Uh, would Would you encourage them to pursue more of that within themselves? Of that kind of. Yeah. Um, or or would you? What would you say to them? I would. First, I think I would hear whoa, how what do they feel about it? Like what feels like it's stopping them doing it, or where where they would what I they would like to do, and but I think just the first step is just to be free with it and explore it, and not to try to do it right or not to try to do it the perfect way. It's just having fun with the color having fun with uh, messing it up yeah. because I think people feel like oh they have to be artists they have to know this and this already they have to know how to draw yeah. they can't do I mean I hear that all the time yeah so well and we we have you know our friend Melissa who I always remember that you all talked about how she enjoys or even I talked to her mm-hmm. about this the very tiny detail yeah so sometimes someone who is very structured finds uh, that outlet and, within their work and that's uh, yeah. that's something I don't like like I also don't have a lot of patience to work on something yeah. for and a long time and it's maybe just to explore what are you drawn to do you know like Melissa is so good doing see that's her doorway with the little details and mm-hmm. that's what she loves to do mm-hmm. and she has done she does amazing things with it because mm-hmm. it just goes what what is her natural thing to do yeah so and maybe for me it is that being messy and being free that's not maybe somebody else's doorway to the art and for you it was like just copying first the nature mm-hmm. Just looking at something. And yeah, when you say that, I realize I don't think I have tried to do that. You have like, really. Wow. It, yeah. Maybe one drawing class that I have taken or something that I had to try it. Yeah. Well, I did. I took some in college, and for sure, you're mm. studying something and mm. trying to replicate it, whether it's a figure drawing or still mm. life. But I don't know if I ever reached the classes like when you really let go of that exploration and then become, you know, it's almost as if the skills help you expand further. Yeah. Same thing, like the rules. Yeah. It's just, in improv too, I always thought, there are no rules to improv. There are very specific rules that support yeah. the amazing creative expression that comes out of improv. Mm-hmm. So there's, I don't know where we're going with all this, but it I feels but like... I, I just feel like when you're saying it, that it would be good for me to also practice doing realistic, just for the, for the, having different kind of skills too. Yeah. Yeah. It I, won't hurt. 
I was thinking about that more from one of these mm-hmm. episodes, just drawing more, mm-hmm. looking at something, replicating mm-hmm. it, or I like to think of it out of my imagination mm-hmm. now, and I've stopped looking at something and developing mm-hmm. that skill better. Can you imagine a life that doesn't include this? No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you would ever want to, but it's so much a part of who you are now. Yeah. And where do you envision it taking you? Um, well, I'm asking the person who doesn't have the plan. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to just, you know, make a big paintings, what I'm doing now, and even bigger, and work in there and explore different kind of mediums and everything, just keep exploring it. And uh, just to sell my paintings and sell my work. and Yeah, do you ever get creative blocks? Um, I don't think I do too much. Yeah. Sometimes I paint and I have to get, a, get away from it because it's not working out or it's too intense because of that. It's not working out so I have to step away from it and it's good for me to step away from it a few days so I could maybe start a different one. But like I, maybe it is also that like I go into that different kind of zone that I have like endless images. Mm-hmm. I don't ever run out of images. So, but it's nice to have a life too. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it does help to have a life, like go camping and be in nature, and then be inspired and and yes. come back and be rejuvenated and be refilled again. And yeah. then it's just the next painting will just come out even more easy when I'm in that space. So yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think I was asking you that because I'm still relatively new to this world, although it's going on a little while, but I think I'll run out of ideas and I don't. Mm-hmm. And that what I, one of the things I love about it is there are endless opportunities to explore. Yeah. I always think of uh, one of the documentaries with David Hockney is really good, and I remember him standing there these huge landscape paintings. He's going outside in his 70s and painting these enormous paintings. And he just said, I'm not going to retire. I'm just going to fall over. Right. <laughs> right. Thought, right. That's how I feel. Yeah. Is that yeah. how you feel too? Yeah, I think so. And it's and just the saying that, like, oh, go into the... It's good to have a life too, but it's not. It, it is a part of the life. It's not like a separate... Yeah. But to do something else just meant like do something else also and not to paint all the time but yeah I don't and, and I have so many ideas of what to do what I want to do that I don't even know how to have time to do all of it yeah so yeah that's how I feel too that's how we're gonna go out <laughs> <laughs> still doing a lot of things with a lot yeah. of ideas yeah. yeah yeah it would be good that would be good. Well, we have a new show planned for you already. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we have new ideas. We have new ideas. Right. Well, is there anything that you would like to share? <laughs> anything if you could, well, tell someone or just something that's on your mind about what it means to just live this particular life? Mm. I don't know, I'm just, I'm so grateful for it, you know. Even when you say about dance and the theater and how creative the life is and how much I get to express, I think for me it's all about self-expression. Mm-hmm. I think growing up in Finland, I didn't feel like I got to express myself, that I'm still kind of undoing myself and finding more and more expression. It's just, it's just so... I'm so grateful and it's so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, I think everybody has it. It's just... Creativity or self Yeah, cre- creativity and self-expression. It's just, you know, doing it or following the impulse. Whatever that is for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I know, it's, it's incredible when you access a part of it. Yeah. And I, I keep emphasizing whether it's your work or or not yeah you know it doesn't have to be your work it's what we're 
that's what we're sharing through the series too. It's just being able to be in that zone in some way. Yeah. It's really fulfilling. Yeah, it is. And I, th- I think also when I feel disconnected from myself that I don't feel full or I don't feel this. I, when I go and paint, I feel like I'm filling up and I'm being my whole self. It's energizing. It's energizing. I like I like the word of soul, and I think it's the expression of a soul, the expressing the soul. So it has a voice. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I I will ask you only because it's been a bit of a theme. Mm-hmm. When, how do you deal with trust and? any anxiety that comes up with making a living as an artist Um, in this world I think I deal with it all the time and that's that's the other side of it how to how to keep creating and then having that pressure of making a living yeah and how to but I just don't I've learned to live with it and um, handling it in different ways but they still have to handle it all the time. Yeah. And I work with it. But I don't see what else to do either. Yeah, you just have to keep going. Yeah. Because I, I can't remember. I can't imagine doing any other job. Ultimately, at the end of the day, just doing great work. Mm-hmm. Doing work that you're proud of. Mm-hmm. That's one way. Just keep deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Deal with any anxiety or yeah pressure that comes with it being your living. Right. Yeah. And I think that I think there's also there's there is still that trust. Like I'm doing the right thing anyway. I'm on the right path. Yeah. Which you really have never wavered from that. It sounds like. Right. That you always know to follow it, even though there's stress, but there's stress with everything mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. uncertainty. Mm-hmm. You seem very clear that you know your, you know your. Direction. I think it's gonna work out. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's perfect. <laughs> I still stubbornly believe that it's going to work out. I do too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm just like a relentlessly optimistic in that kind of way, even though one, you know, wanted to give up so many times. Yeah. So. That's perfect. Yeah. That was a good close. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Oti. Yeah, thank you, Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for everybody. Oh, that was fun.